That's right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
the church say amen. amen. Let's repeat the 23rd Psalm, please. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff will comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my hand for oil, my cup running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Oh, no. 
our pastor absent, we have uh, Reverend Braxton that's coming with the word, and then Amen. we will have prayer by Deacon Tweedle. Amen. Good morning again, B. Before I do the scripture, I, I saw Brother Corey is holding his back trying to walk, so everybody just point toward Brother Corey and tell God to heal him right now. Right now, Jesus. Right now. Amen. I will be reading from Acts 8, 9 through 13, and 18 through 20. You have it say amen. amen. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, given out that himself was something great, a great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regards, because that of long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. But when they believed Philip's preaching the things concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. Then Simon himself believed also. When he was baptized, he continued with Philip and wonders, beholding the miracles and signs that were done. 18. And when Simon saw that through the land hands of the apostles, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered them money, saying, give me also this power, that whosoever I lay hands, he may receive the Holy Ghost. But Peter said unto him, thy money perish with me, because thy has not, thy has thought that the gift of God may be purchased with money. This is the reading of God's word. It is already blessed. Amen. Let us bow our heads in prayer, please. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this day. Thank you for last week's journey, for all our trials and tribulations. Oh, hallelujah, you were there for us. All we had to do was spiritually reach out and touch the, whole, the hem of your garment. What a mighty God we serve. Oh, Father, we just want to say thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to come here safely. We hope the same on our return home. Bless those in the na in this nursing homes. Bless those on our sick list. Touch their hearts, Father. We ask that you plant an angel of mercy by each and every one of them, letting them know that there's a bright side somewhere, and that bright side is Jesus the Christ. We ask a special prayer for our pastor, him and his wife, on their vacation. Keep loving arms and protection around them. Let them have a beautiful time, and bring them back safely to our, to our fold. We ask that you bless each and every ministry here, this branch of Zion. Let us know, let us realize that every only thing we do for Christ is we last, will last. Oh, thank you, Father, for this day. We ask a special prayer for this world. We ask a special prayer for that what happened in Oregon, all those people that were killed. Oh, touch the hearts of these young kids nowadays. Let them know that there's a better way to do it than killing and robbing and everything else. Let them know the name of Jesus. All they have to do is just look up to the hills from whence cometh all their help and strength and call upon his holy and righteous name and he'll be there for you. Oh, thank you, Father, for everything you've done for us and what you're going to do for us. Everything I ask, I ask in the precious name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.
this time we'll receive the benevolent offering. Let us pray. Our Father and our God, it is in the mighty name of Jesus that we have assembled here this day. Father, we thank you and we praise you for all that our hearts have received. We pray that by your Spirit, you would bless to our hearts the understanding of all the love and care that you've provided for us. We thank you that you've entrusted us with your word to share with those who haven't heard yet and to prepare to bless them when they become a part of us. We thank you for that which you receive on behalf of them. In Jesus' name, amen.
It's now time for our announcements. Thoughtful people make thankful hearts. Reverend Ezekiel Bay and parishioners, thank you so much for the thoughtful thing to do. Thank you so much for the memorial services for our brother Joe. God bless you all. He will be missed, but he is with God in heaven. Thank you, Rose Campton, Joe's sister. Amen. Amen. Also, we'd like to inform our UBT family of Deacon Ernest Tober is now in Meadowview Nursing Home. He's in room 159. There is a phone number, 609-645-7700. Now I've been told when you call that number, um, please do not hang up because it is connected to the police department. So you're going to listen for four prompts and you will respond to prompt number four, okay? Do not hang up. The UBT Senior Ushers Recognition and Recruitment Day will be held here on Sunday, October the 11th at 11 o'clock a.m. Is that correct? Because someone said that there was a question about eight o'clock? They said eight this morning. Um, there's an usher right there. Could you clarify that? Is the service at 8 or 11? At 11 o'clock. Amen? Shining the light on the exploitation of insect and molestation of our children. Presented by Dr. Martin A. Finkel, founder and co-director of the Child Abuse Research Education and Service Institute at Rowan University School of osteopathic medicine. The CARES Institute is a national, international leader in the development of medical and mental health diagnostic and treatment services for children who have experienced sexual vic victimization and other forms of child maltreatment exposure to violence. The Institute conducts clinical research, authored books, peer-reviewed publications, professional training, and policy development. This will be held on Friday, October the 30th, 2015. The time is 9 a.m. to 12 noon. The place is at Carnegie Library Center at Stockton University, located here in Atlantic City, New Jersey. Registration forms can be picked up in the office. Also, um, our church is asking for volunteers to drive the van so we can be about God's business and pick up those that are need for transportation. Any volunteers, please see someone in the office. Amen. Amen. Pardon me, my church family, but it would do me harm if I didn't say what I had to say. On uh, the other night, I was uh, I was given an opportunity to go away and be uh, noticed and recognized by Bethany, but due to the weather, I couldn't make it. So I sent my prayers and all my love out to my co-people co in Bethany, and I congratulated all of them. I didn't get a chance to congratulate Sister Diane or Sister Patrice or Sister Terry Timberlake because they were also recognized uh, in their office for Bethany. Bethany is a good thing for us because it's something that we're a part of. Um, I'm going to do my best to be the best first vice president that they had. And as uh, long as the Lord allows me, I'm going to travel and do the work of the Lord for the layman. Amen. Also, uh, as a reminder, as us being saints, Keep it in your mind. Every time you turn around, God is blessing you. Amen. I would like to say uh, this morning. I was able to visit Dr. Robert Mann during the week, and he asked me to ask the church to pray for him. He fell his roof while he was doing roof work, and the bone came through his legs and something like that. And he had some serious surgery. So 
Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Have time? Well, I understand. Did anybody have a birthday anniversary this past week? No one? <laughs> oh. Let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, into the house of the God of Jacob, and he will teach us of his ways, and we will walk in his paths. Hello, and once again it's Temple Time, the worship broadcast from the Union Baptist Temple of Atlantic City, New Jersey, calling us from a world of care and telling the nations that their Savior is come. This is your host, Sean Marie Hinton, inviting you to another life-changing encounter with the Word of God under the anointing of the Holy Spirit. We teach Jesus of Nazareth as Savior and Lord, faith in his finished work on Calvary as the way of salvation, love as the law of his kingdom, and his coming again as the blessed hope of the believer. Do stay with us and pray with us as the Mass Choir ministers to us in song, and Reverend Lois W. Braxton prepares to share with us the teaching of Acts chapter 8, verses 9 through 13, and verses 18 through 20, in a sermon entitled, when magic won't do. Believe it and receive it. Your blessing is on the way.
You know, we have been so blessed by this choir. This, this, this choir is on fire. Hallelujah. So blessed. I'd like to reread in your hearing Acts 8, 9 through 13. But there was a certain man called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, given out that himself was some great one, to whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, This man is the great power of God. And to him they had regard that of long time he had bewitched them with sorcery. But when they believed Philip's preaching concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ, they were baptized, both men and women. 18 says, when Simon saw that through laying hands on, of the apostles that the Holy Ghost was given, he offered money, saying, give me this power that so whatever or whoever I lay hands on, he may receive the Holy Ghost. Amen. My concentration this morning is verse 10 and 18. To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. And 18 says, when Simon saw that through laying hands by the apostle, the Holy Ghost was given, he offered money. Now, if we went back to Acts 1, we see where Jesus sent his apostles into Samaria. Because of that area, they were condemned by the bewitchedness. Mm -hmm. And the first one that went there was James and John. Uh -huh. And John said he wanted to call heaven uh -huh. and let fire rain down on it. That's how bad it was. But then when the apostle picked the seven, Philip being one, last week or week before, we, we talked about Stephen. Now, Philip was going to Samaria. Now, when he got to Samaria, he ran into a sorcerer, a man with magic powers, and he had this craft down to a science. He had everybody there bewitched and blinded by his magic. He had them thinking that he was the greatest thing since ice cream and cake. Come on, somebody. But there was one thing he didn't know about. The kingdom of God. Hallelujah. So when Philip came in and started preaching about the kingdom of God through Jesus Christ, the people started to believe. And when the people started to believe, Simon said, look, now this is digging in my pocket here. You know, uh, I can't get paid if he's going to do the work. So he joined the bandwagon. He became a believer. And those that believed what Philip was preaching was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. However... God saw fit not to give him the Holy Ghost at that time. Amen. So when the word got back to Jerusalem, that Philip had baptized these people that nobody wanted to be a part of, that they had called down fire from heaven to rain on them, they decided, let's send John back in there. But this time we're going to send Peter with him. And when Peter and John got there, they started praying for the people. Yeah. And when they started praying for the people, God touched them in order that they might touch somebody else. Right. 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 
And everybody that they laid hands on received the Holy Ghost. When they received the Holy Ghost, now Simon, hallelujah, pockets started itching him again. When he saw that Peter could put his hands on somebody and the Holy Spirit would arrive, he wanted this gift. He said, Peter, look, just give me that power. If you can give me the power, I can lay my hands on someone and give them the Holy Ghost. I'll give you some money. Peter was offended. He said, let you and your money perish. The Holy Ghost is a spirit from God. It's a gift. Now, 1 Corinthians says, 12 and 1 says, Now, concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you to be ignorant. But Simon was ignorant. It says, ye know that if ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led, Simon was a dumb idol. He didn't know God. Wherefore, I give you the understanding that no man, speaking by the Spirit of God, called Jesus, can occur that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord only by the Holy Ghost. Amen. And when he started giving out gifts and he was naming the gifts, he said, I can give you the gift word of wisdom. And over here, he said, I can give you the gift word of knowledge. And over here, he says, I can give you the gift of faith, but they're all going to be from the same spirit, my spirit, hallelujah. And then over here, he said, I'll give you the gift of healing. I'll allow you to work miracles. I'll allow you to speak in tongues, and I'll allow you to interpret the tongues all from the same spirit, hallelujah. And, and, and he says, when you live in the dark, you expect your magic to work. Oh, so, but when you step out in the light, yeah. it blinds you. Come on. You can't see how to do your magic. Right. So with Simon, once he thought he had something to hang on to, you know, he wanted to uh, pay for it. But then salvation is free. Amen. <laughs> salvation is free. He, he paid it all. So we don't owe anything. And, and you know, I, I started to think about Simon says, and now he tagged along with Philip. And then he was learning and seeing all the miracles that Philip was doing. And it just, he, it just got to him. You know, you ever been with somebody and they can't do what you do, but they always want to do what you do. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Hello. Just ain't got it. <laughs> but they'll keep trying. Yeah. If you put on black, they're going to put on black. <laughs> you know, if you go buy some new shoes, they're going to buy some new yeah. shoes. Yeah. They just <laughs> copy test. You're right. <laughs> but whatever you do, whether they can afford it or not, now, Simon did not have the knowledge of what these gifts was about. That's right. But as he followed Philip around, he wanted to do what Philip did. But he couldn't preach the word. So then Peter tells him, maybe your money and your word is going to perish. So he was like, okay, Peter, I, I, I understand. He said, no, you don't understand. Because what I'm talking about comes from inside. You are trying to put these words on the outside lady. Said, so, well, internal, you don't have it. He said, well, well, Peter, let me ask you something. Can you pray for me? Can you pray for me, Peter? Peter says, I think you need to repent yourself. He said, no, Peter. So I, 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 I think I need to ask you to pray for me. But wouldn't it be sad that our blessing went to the highest bidder? That our salvation belonged to someone that had the big company on the hill? Right. Right. <laughs> Wouldn't it be sad? Yes. I don't think I would make it. <laughs> you know, somebody might not like me. <laughs> they might like Tammy better than me, you know? You know, if you're going to the highest bidder, 
in your wildest dream, someone being able to buy your Holy Spirit, your spirit. You know, your spirit that he gave you, that he says, I walk with you always. I am here in spirit. But over here, Michael can buy it for 200 grand. Got that now. But you know he can. <laughs> but everything ain't for sale. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> everything is not for sale. And, and when we look around uh, at the way the world is, in this text, in the teacher's guide, there's a story. And it says that the deacon of the church made an appointment with the pastor of the church. Mm-hmm. And they met at the coffee house. So while the deacon was there playing with the sugar packages, the pastor came in. And he spoke to the deacon and said, good afternoon, Dick, how you doing? And the deacon said, I'm fine, blessed, how are you? And he said, well, we got a big day coming up. We got harvest fest coming up. So we're going to have a busy month. And the deacon start rattling his papers. And finally, the pastor said, well, why did you call me here? He said, Pastor, you know I'm the first one in the church in the morning. I'm the last one to leave in the evening. <laughs> I'm the highest high payer in the church. Every time somebody needs something, they call me. <laughs> so I think it's about time that you elevate me to elder. Pastor sit back in his seat and says, "My deacon, it don't work that way." <laughs> he says, "Only God can call you to preach." Yeah, so what right. makes you think because you pay tithes above everybody else, oh. and you open up the church in the morning and you close it up at night, oh. that you're prepared to speak? Only God can give yeah. you oh. that. Yeah. It don't belong to us. It's a gift from God. Yeah. And unless God gives you that gift, it don't belong to you. It still belongs to him. And the deacon said, well, Pastor, I don't don't think I can stay there any longer. (laughs) He said, well, Deacon, you've been a good servant to the church. (laughs) We're going to have to cut back on some things if you leave. However... (laughs) However, 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 if God don't give it to you, you don't have it. That Holy Spirit belongs to God. It's a gift and only God can give it to you. He does not give it to everybody. He does not just put it out on the stand and say, help yourself. It's not a a serve yourself smorgasbord. When God says, I lay his hands on you and just touch you and gives you a gift. It might be the gift of wisdom. It might be the gift of healing, the gift of tongue. But it's all from the same spirit, and that spirit is God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost, all combined in one. You know, we, we can't buy God's gift. I don't care how many times you come to church during the day. You can come six but if God don't give it to you, you ain't got nothing. Only God can give it to you. You know, you can go to church and say, I've been there 22 years because my mom was there 44. She was there 44 years for her. You there 22 years for you. If God didn't give it to you, you still ain't got it. You still don't have it. You know, we, we've been taught to say, okay, when you get the call, don't just go jump up in the good seat. No, Dick, it's, it's wait to be seated in those seats. You have to be called to the good seat, you know. Um, <laughs> Hallelujah. But you, you know, there are people that think that God owed them something. Yeah. Oh. Oh, you read a few chapters in the Bible and you're holding it down. God owes them something. But I guarantee you, if you don't stay in the word, 
and wait on him, you know nothing. You know, when they walk in, they have a special seat in the church. They wave to the poor people. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Have a secret board meeting, okay? You know, but any time you have these secret meetings and then you said, don't tell nobody, look up! Yeah. Hey! Look up! Somebody's watching you. Somebody is watching you. You know, if you got, if he's blessed you to work a miracle and you want to get paid for it, don't you know he own you? You don't own nothing? The creator owns you, everything about you. I was having a talk with my brother, and we were talking about the body. I told him, God only knows us this body. He let us use it. That's right. That pretty soon it's going to go in the grave. Because right. he doesn't need our body. Right. We only need the body. Right. You know, we're going to get eat up by worms. All he needs is the soul. The body is going back to ashes. That's right. So when we put a lot of emphasis on this body, you better be thinking God's going to let it carry you around and help you to do what you have to do on this earth. Because it's a gift to have a good body. Right. If you don't believe it's a gift, get sick and somebody had to carry you around. Yeah. Right. If you don't believe it's a good body, get diseased and nobody want to come near you. Right. The gift of God is free. It is free. Yes. Salvation is free. Yeah. And I'm so grateful that it's free. Yeah. Because if it wasn't free, hallelujah, everybody that looked like they like you don't like you. And we would be in trouble. Definitely trouble. And we all, there's nobody perfect. You know, I have a brother and I used to give him a ride back to EHT. And every time he got in my car, I know he had been nipping a little bit, you know. I knew that. But the first thing he would say to me, hey, Lord, ain't nobody perfect. <laughs> <laughs> so I would look over there at him. He says, that's what Reverend Bay said, ain't nobody perfect. So I said, no, Jesus Christ was perfect. Mm -hmm. He made you in his image. That don't mean that you have to be perfect, but you have to be somewhat like him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, you just can't go all the way left. You got to stay in the zone at some point. Right. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and he didn't wait for me to ask that. He would just say, Lois, ain't nobody perfect. I didn't ask you. <laughs> but to sum it up is that Jesus loves us. Yes. And because he loves us so much, all his gifts is free. It's like waking up on Christmas morning. Hallelujah. Especially if it's your birthday. Hallelujah. <laughs> and, and, and just running downstairs. You know, the kids would come running downstairs like something was behind them. They just loved the gifts. They didn't care what it was. They didn't even know what it was. They just start tearing into it. So when God gives you a gift, hold on to it, nourish it, thank him for it. Because he didn't have to do it. He could have sent you to the magic man. And once the magic potion ran out, he could touch you every way you want with that wand, but nothing was going to happen. He didn't have the power. God has the power. And only God has the power. I don't care what you do, how you think you hear from me or the diggers or the choir. You can't hide from God. You can't hide from God. Everything he says, he says, look up. He said, look up. You cannot hide from God. You can peep around the corner and see if you see anybody coming. That's right. Hide behind the tree. You can do all that stuff. <laughs> but you can't hide from God. 
It's amazing that you can't hide from God. Even, even a little mustard seed that you put in the ground don't hide too long until it sprouts out. That's right. That's right. That's right. You plant a garden seed, see how long it stays in the soil. It germinates and comes up. Nothing can hide from God because everything belongs to God. He is the creator of all things. So his things cannot hide from him. So when he gives you a gift, if he gives you the gift of tongue, he will give somebody the gift of interpretation. If he gives you a gift of faith, gift of healing, gift of miracles, they all come from the same spirit. Maybe not from the same person, but the same spirit. To God be the glory. Amen. Amen. The doors of the church is open. We wouldn't want to leave today having someone here that needed a church home or just somebody to pray for them. If you're there needing a church home or just a prayer, please come forward. The doors of the church is open. brother we are for Christ oh my sister he'll give you life abundantly Oh come Come on To cry Everybody is salvation. He that is thirsty, let him come to the waters and drink free. Yes, yes. The table has already been set. There is no charge. Once God set you free, Jesus Christ said you are free indeed. Because he set me free. I didn't have nobody. Oh, yes. I didn't have nothing but my empty liquor bottles and my drug for names. And he set me free. He delivered me. He delivered most Hallelujah. of the demons out of me. Hallelujah. And he's still working on this building. He has not begun a good work in you that he would not complete until the coming of Jesus Christ. God loves you. May there be one. I would like to take this time for you to join hands next to the person that you are standing to for a word of prayer. We thank God for the preached word Amen. from Reverend Braxton. We thank God for bringing her to us thank God for Reverend Bailey bringing a preached word this morning. The teacher, Reverend Child. Father God, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nigel, we come before your presence one more time to say thank you. We thank you, God, for the gift of salvation. We thank you, God, for the right and the freedom to come into your holy sanctuary and worship your name. Where in a lot of countries they don't have that privilege. 
They have ran down and hunted for the slaughter of your word. Bless the Christians that's been persecuted and slaughtered for your word. Bless the pastor of this church in Ezekiel Grand Bay. Bless all your pastors, O oh God, that's preaching the word that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. Oh, Father God, we ask that you bless all governments, the President of the United States, the leader of all nations, dictators, all the refugees that's fleeing from Syria, traveling to Europe and Germany. Everybody wants to be free. Bless all the little children that's being abused and sold in sexual slavery. All your missionaries out in your field that's doing your will. The poor and the sick and afflicted and the homeless and disabled and the blind. The unfortunate. Bless the ones that don't know how to pray for themselves. But oh Father God in the name of Jesus. The saints. Here at this portion of Zion, Union Baptist Temple in Atlanta City, New Jersey. That's under the sound of my voice. Needs special attention today. We ask, oh God, that you will go from heart to heart and give every person according to their needs. Love and peace and joy. Perseverance. Strength. We ask you to look down, Lord, upon all marriages between a man and a woman. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we ask that you bless this whole congregation here at the Union Baptist Temple. Bless all the lost sheep where names are on the road. You know where they are, God. Bless our neighborhoods. But we always praying, oh God, to bless our young black men. But we ask, oh God, that you bless the older people. Yes, yes. The grandmothers and the parents. Yes. Because they watch us. Yes. But we ask that you bless our neighborhoods, Carver Hall, Stanley Home, Back Marlin, all over all your nations. Use us as better witness, oh God, because we are selling the gospel of Jesus Christ. We are businessmen and businesswomen for you, oh Lord. We ask you to bless us this day with love and peace and joy. We thank you for the healing, O oh God, of our minds and souls and spirit. We ask that you bless our doctors and bless, bless the medication that we take. Bless us now, God, as we go forth. We thank you for all you have blessed us with. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Let the church say amen. 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 Understanding that the paying of tithes, the giving of offering, purchases nothing from God. We walk in his favor, yes, right. which we cannot purchase, That's right. even by doing good. That's not to say you don't do good. That's right. Because the law of reciprocity has not been suspended. As you sow, so shall you reap. Yes. But it was given so that we would plan on doing the things of God, not so we'd be afraid to act. 
Lord, we thank you for the blessing we received in the lesson that was taught us in the preachment we've just received. We pray that our eyes are open wide enough to see how great a blessing your word brings. Father, we thank you for how you love us and care for us and provide the nourishment that we need through the preached word. We thank you for this and for receiving from us. We bless your name and thank you because it's only a part of what you already own. Thank you, Lord. Amen.
God has spoken. Let the church say amen. Let the church.